Advent Week 1, Service, Hope, 11.26.22, 1.20 p.m., Lebanon, Connecticut. And good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Lebanon. I hope you had a great Thanksgiving with your loved ones. Now we turn our attention to Christmas. Welcome. The service will begin soon. Join us. So we will do the prelude, intro, and we will get started. Our prelude today is Christ Be Our Light. This will be the prelude for all four services. By the way, as long as you see me in that little box on the, on the lower right, it means it's fair use. All right, thank you, Corey. That was very pretty. And we were going to try to get a clearer, much louder version of that. 
So here are your announcements for today. Today we begin the four weeks leading up to Christmas. Each service has a certain theme to it. Like today's service is hope. Next week will be peace, joy, and love. We will have a Christmas Eve service this year, uh, probably in the evening. And we are Boston bound next Saturday with mom and dad, and we're going to Providence Solo on December 16th, post semester. Also, that reset I was telling you about was coming soon. And the end of the semester is December 15th, which means, unfortunately, my job comes to a brief halt. That's okay, because it will resume in January. Anything else you guys want to talk about? You know what? That is a good question. I am wondering about if I ask the instructor to do those recordings again, if I just send them to her and say to her, okay, you can use these if you would like. Especially when we get into harder material. Anything else? No? Well, today is Advent week one, and week one is all about hope. Hoping that God's promise that he will send us his son in a month's time. And every week, just like Lent, every week leads up into, those, into that moment. So receive the call to worship. I was glad when they said to me, let's go to the house of the Lord. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains. Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. Okay, that was short and sweet. And our opening hymn today, number 11, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, courtesy of our friends at the Common Ground Church. So, Come Thou Fount from the Common Ground Church, number 11. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy praise. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious song, and sun by flame and songs above. Praise his name, I'm fixed upon it. Name of God's redeeming love. Hitherto thy love has blessed me. Thou hast brought me to this praise. And I know thy hand will bring me safely home by thy good grace. Jesus saw me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God. He to rescue me from danger, bought me with his precious blood. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, by my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. 
Here's my heart, it'll take it, seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Let's pray. Lord, this afternoon we come before you tune our hearts to sing when well, you tune our hearts to sing your praise so when O oh god will the day of hope come when will the nations shrink to your holy mountain and beat their swords into plowshares when will the long night of war and hatred give way to the dawn of light righteousness and joy we are ready for the dawn O oh god shine your light into our world mighty one of peace illuminate the path give us the wisdom and courage to follow your light we pray in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. I will see in the mercies, 161. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing. I will sing. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness, thy faithfulness. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever i will sing i will sing i will sing of the mercies of the lord forever i will sing of the mercies of the lord All right, thank you. Very good, please be seated. And our anthem today is Come Light of Christmas.
Thank you, Claudia. That was very pretty. So we come to the place of prayer today. It's a time where we can lift each other up. Where we can think about the things that we are hopeful for. And the things that we can look forward to as we walk into this final month of 2022. And also look ahead into 2023. There is quite a bit that we can pray for today. Obviously, we want to send birthday wishes to Charlie. Obviously, still not talking to us, even to this day. And in the message, I'm going to tell you what we learned from somebody, an outside source in New York, who I talked to about that situation. Obviously, we continue to pray for the victims in Parkland. Obviously, the Walmart shooting this week, and you know, just more of the same. Uh, it's it's the violence in our world that it becomes very scary. It is scary to go not to even just run a simple errand. You know, to feel like oh, you have to do it, do what you gotta do real quick, and then just come home because you don't know what is out there. And thankfully, Lebanon is a very safe town. With all that in mind, I will give you opportunity to lift, those, lift up those that you know. And our first song today is 2206 Without Seeing You. We'll do the first two verses, right, and then all of them. Of seeing you, we love you. Without touching you, we embrace. Without knowing you, we follow. Without seeing you, we believe. We return to you deep within. Leave the past to the dust. Turn to you with tears and fasting. You are ready to forgive. Without seeing you, we love you. Without touching you, we embrace. Without knowing you, we follow. Without seeing you, we believe. The sparrow will find a home near to you, oh God. How happy we who dwell. 
dwell with you forever in your house. Without seeing you, we love you. Without touching you, we embrace. Without knowing you, we follow. Without seeing you, we believe. Lord, this afternoon, we come before you. Two days after giving thanks, we now turn our attention to one of the most significant holidays on the calendar. The day of your birth. And why we celebrate it every 25th of December. But... Uh, excuse me. Everything is commercialized these days. Everything. You see it. Even in the summer, we know it's coming. But, we, but you are the light of Christmas, and you're also you're the light of the world. You shine your light upon those that wait in darkness. Maybe those who don't have a voice. Maybe those that just don't know when to speak up and when to just let it go. That's what I'm learning personally. Learn how to let certain things go, knowing that knowing that there may be never be an answer to why certain things happen. Well, we continue to pray for Charlie. We wish him happy birthday today. And we wish him well. And just know that we are leaving the door open for him. That eventually he maybe he'll come around. So that way we can put this to rest. Maybe start again. Maybe start a new chapter to whatever this might be moving forward. I think he would be very impressed with what I've been able to do here in 2022 and the things that we can still look forward to in the coming weeks and months. We continue to hope and pray for a new Wilbur, as that will be a blessing in itself to have another Boston that we can love and cherish just as much as we loved and cherished Wilbur over these last dozen years. But with all this goodness, sadness is never far behind. We think of the victims in Parkland. We think of the victims in that in that department store shooting this past week. All of this is happening because the world has gone crazy. The need for violence. There is no peace in the world. And where we feel like when we go do something, we have to just hurry up and be quick about it and then just come home. Just because of not knowing what's coming next. We'll find our way. We found our way here in 2022. And that is something I will be talking about in the message coming up shortly. So as we come to your table today. And we think about this Christmas season, the four themes of it, hope, peace, joy, and love. You will guide our path every step of the way. And for the viewers at home, we pause and give you the chance to lift up those that you know.
And so it's to this end. The sparrow will find a home near to you. And we who dwell in you will be forever in your house without seeing you. We know you are here just as much as we know Wilbur is still still in this house. So it is in that prayer that you taught us saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as earth it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Forever we sing to you of your goodness, O oh God. Proclaim it to all the world of your faithfulness and love. Without seeing you, we love you. Without touching you, we embrace. Without knowing you, we follow. Without seeing you, we believe. For you are our shepherd. There is nothing that we need. In green pastures we will find our rest near the waters of peace. Without seeing you, we love you. Without touching you, we embrace. Without knowing you, we follow. Without seeing you, we believe. Now, the reason why I did that is because the version that I found is way too slow for our purposes. So it is operatory time, which means that it is a time where you guys can subscribe to this channel. And also continue to check out some of those other videos that I've been working on as well. It is football season. Football's in full swing. So you're going to be seeing a lot of Madden from here until the end of the season. But also the trade rides are coming back uh, next Saturday, of course, will be the real trade ride from New London to Fenway. And also Fenway back to New London. So that is on the way. And obviously the reset is on the way as well. So a lot of stuff that we can look forward to as here at the end of the semester, and certainly there is a lot of hope and you know optimism as we head into the spring 2023 semester. But in the meantime, our operatory today is a winter song. Will the ushers please come forward as we receive the afternoon's gifts and offering?
Please rise. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Lord, we know in four weeks' time you will send us your morning star. You'll be it'll be our rebirth and a rebuild of hope. So take these gifts and multiply them and make yourself known throughout the world. As we have just about made it to the end of the semester, and we look forward to whatever twenty, whatever the rest of 2022, and we look forward to what 2023 has in store for us as well. In Jesus' name, Amen. Please be seated. All right. So the reading today comes from Romans chapter 13, 11 to 14, and then Psalm 122. <laughs> but make sure you don't get so absorbed and exhausted and taking care of your day-to-day -day obligations that you lose track of time and doze off, oblivious to God. The night is about over. Dawn is about to break. Be up and awake to what God is doing. God is putting the finishing touches on the, on the salvation work he began when, he, when we first believed. We can't afford to waste a minute. But, it's not, but waste a minute must not squander these precious daylight hours in frivolity and indulgence and in sleeping around and dissipata dissipation and bickering and grabbing everything in sight. Get out of bed and get dressed. Don't loiter and linger. Wait until the very last minute. Dress yourselves in Christ and be up and about. And now the Psalm 122, which illustrates that same idea. When they said, let's go to the house of God, my heart leaped for joy. And now we're here. O oh, Jerusalem, inside Jerusalem's walls. Jerusalem, well-built city, built as a place for worship. The city to which the tribes ascend, all God's tribes go up to worship, to give thanks to the name of God, this is what it means to be Israel. Thrones for righteous judgment and set there, famous David thrones. Pray for Jerusalem's peace, prosperity to all you Jerusalem lovers. Friendly insiders get a lot. Hostile outsiders, keep your distance. For the sake of my family and friends, I say it again, live in peace. For the sake of the house of our God, God, I'll do my very best for you. Here ends the reading, and may God have the blessings of reading of these holy words. So, as I was thinking about this message, this took a couple of weeks to think about. I realized that there were signs of hope here. Now you're probably thinking, what does hope, what is hope defined as? Hope is defined as, actually, let's ask, let's see. It, 
It's a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. So the hope of wanting to pass a class. That happens every semester, basically from start to finish. So you figure from late August to mid-December. And also, and also in the spring semester, from late January to, to mid-May. But the signs of hope that I wanted to talk about here is actually something that I learned earlier this week when talking with somebody in New York about what happened at 10-1. He put it this way. He basically said, because Charlie was an alcoholic and because he was in, because he had to go to these meetings and whatnot, he probably he probably figured, oh, he saw the relationship as a way to get as a way to distract himself from, you know, grabbing, you know, the next beer. Obviously, this is not beer. This is Coke. Or to grab the next drink or, you know, maybe to go out to a bar and go get completely and go get completely wasted. What we have to realize here is what was done throughout those 15 months, throughout the 15 month period, all basically was because, number one, he didn't know how to explain it to me. Maybe he didn't know how to, you know, say, um, Nick, this is how it is, being an alcoholic, and this is the reason why I go do these things. Because the alcohol is, is impulse. It was impulsive for him to go to a bar or, you know, maybe go to a package store and go get maybe a 12-pack or a 24-pack or, or whatever. It's the impulse to drink led him to the place that he was in. Because he wasn't given, he wasn't set a very good example at home. So obviously, as he was growing up, he saw his father, he saw his mom and dad, you know, drink profusely, and obviously that led him to think, in his mind, it was like, oh, this is normal behavior, you know, let me get in on it. Which obviously led him, was, and then obviously that led him down to a place of thinking that he could get away with everything, and real ed, think, oh, there are there's no consequences, there's no repercussions for doing these things. Well, reality check, there is. He got mixed up in the wrong crib. You know, he had he had his days in court. He had his days behind bars. And then all of a sudden, about Three weeks before I came along, he found a place in West Haven to live. Okay, so that's that was a, that's a positive step. And you know, I came along and it started off okay, but that but then it just it just led down to the place that it ended in. It was very one sided. Number one, he obviously did not know what it meant to be on the spectrum. Second, maybe he didn't even care. Third, he wanted me to be like him. So all of these things were put on the table when I was talking to this guy, talking to this person in New York. Obviously, this was online and so on. They basically said. Alcohol is addictive. So he could go do he 
you know, he was very welcoming, and obviously he looked forward to when I came, when I was coming down there, and obviously he looked forward to, you know, whatever was planned. I shouldn't use the word you know, because I used it about uh, about 50 times in the last service, but whatever. Signs of hope were there. And then to just throw it all away as if it meant nothing to him, that is where that is where this is still an issue. He has a lot of his own issues that need to be sorted out in some type of way where he can look back and just think and just think about what he did to me then maybe he might reach out and say I'm sorry for what I did to you and then to show me that he is sorry but the thing is with alcoholics they they will apologize for their own actions but then but then you know something goes off in their head and they just do it again they realize and i think that's what was happening here i think from the time we went to fenway on 922 that the time to that friday when it was time to go down there just a, it was a typical day typical friday i think he may have realized. I think he got to a point where he just couldn't do it anymore. And maybe it had nothing to do with us. Maybe it had nothing to do with me. He just couldn't handle it anymore. He just felt like, okay, I got to go. But that, my friends, was the alcohol talking. That was on impulse. This is what this year has taught me about this whole situation. It's a learning process where we learn how to deal with certain people and how to deal and how to face certain situations. But this is the one thing that, that I'm learning now. When we go down there on the train, it's just a stop now. That's all it is. It's just a stop. And we are learning more with this with Eduardo too. Yes, there were signs of hope, but sometimes people change. Sometimes their lifestyle changes. And maybe they just don't want us around anymore. And, we are, and I'm also learning that you're better off just doing things for yourself. Just doing things on your own. Going to Boston with mom and dad next weekend, that's a positive thing. Going to Providence on our own, that's a positive thing. To just go for ourselves. Which can be by ourselves. This is what 2022 has taught me. And as he says in Romans 13 there. Where, where is it? But make sure that you don't get so absorbed and exhausted and taking care of all your day-to-day -day obligations that you lose track of the time and doze off oblivious to God. Exactly. This is something that I think Charlie felt like he had to do day in and day out at both of his employment, at both places where he was employed at the time. He felt like he had to run every group of training
he felt like he had to get so absorbed in it that you know that by the time he came home at the end of the day he didn't have the energy to do to do anything he felt like he had to be number one We can't afford to waste a minute, must not squander these precious daylight hours in frivolity and indulgence in sleeping around in disposition. Excuse me, dissipation and bickering and grabbing, grabbing everything in sight. Again, this is exactly what he, what I think he felt like he had to do. But the reality is he didn't have to do any of those things. He did. All he could have done was to recognize the fact, like on a Friday, if he knew that I was coming down there at, I believe it was like 6.30 or even maybe 7 o'clock or whatever. If he knew, when I told him, okay, I'm leaving New London on the train, I'll be there in however many minutes. I think it was like almost an hour hour 15 somewhere around there so he could have thought and been like okay let me go to my aa meetings and then when nick comes he has all of my attention and so when i got there instead of just saying oh i'll go to my meetings now He didn't think about that, did he? No. No, because alcoholics are also narcissists. They only think about themselves. They only think about what they want to do at the time versus just looking at the bigger picture. And for him to understand the fact that, okay. I'm not saying that Charlie is a bad person. I don't think he is. I think he means well. I think eventually he he probably will want to talk to us again. He probably might ask like, "Oh, how is everything going?" Or, you know, "What have you been, or what have you been doing?" And so on. I think he will get to that point, but that just takes time. So signs of hope. This is hoping that on December 25th, when we walk up to that manger, guess what? Jesus is born. The hope and the love and the peace and the joy of, of this holiday, knowing that in this season of Advent, this is like preparing for that day. It's kind of like in Lent where we prepare for Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and then Easter. In every major holiday in the church calendar, there is something that leads up into it. And the significance of this means something, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Let's look at this in. Let's look at this in the from QB's perspective. Okay, so the semester starts in August, in late August, and you go 15 weeks leading up to the end. And you hope that you can that you can pass whatever classes or classes that you are in. That was another thing that, that this year has taught me. As much as there was little to no hope of thinking like, oh, I'm not good enough in public speaking or, you know, the teacher doesn't like me and so on. No. There were signs of hope. By doing what I had to do in order to get from a 55 to almost an 80. That's a big difference.
And the hope is to pass this class and to just put it to bed. And then get ready for whatever composition has to throw at us. You see, none of this would have, none of this probably would be happening if Charlie was still here, or even if Ware was still here too. None of this would, would be would have been happening. If it, it it would, but it would be like like whoa. Basically, it would be like as it was. But this is different. We're changing. And making this right for ourselves and for those that we come in contact with. And those of you that think not responding is a good way to do things, I don't think so. It takes two seconds to respond. Manners and respect go a long way. And that is today's message. Amen. Communion him is come share the Lord. Just listen to it. And the one she meets us here in the breaking of the bread. The angel say we'll see the glory of our Lord and come and came. Now we anticipate the feast for which we wait. Come take the bread, come drink the cup, come share the Lord. I'm sure the Lord. So on the night he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread, he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, This is my body, broken for you. 
do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he took the cup. And after blessing, he said, in this cup is a new covenant of my blood, which is poured out for you. So as often as we eat of the bread and we drink from the cup, we remind that he is the living Christ, who is alive even now in 2022, and that he is the sign of hope, the hope of things to come, both now and in our future. Let's pray. Lord, your table is a symbol for so many. It is a sign of hope that you give to us each and every day. From the, de from the time we wake up to the time we go to bed. You are with us e every day. And this table is a wonderful reminder of that. And so now as we leave this sacred place today. May you continue to show your grace and mercy to all who will receive it. In Jesus name. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.